There we go. So when I sit down with my kids to watch the movie Frozen, the last thing I expect is to find myself crying by the end of the opening song. It's, it's not up. You're not supposed to cry. But that first song is a song sung by men harvesting ice in a frozen harbor. And they sing about how it's hard, and it's beautiful, and it's cold, and they're going to break that frozen heart. 1993, I'm a sophomore at Central Michigan University in Mount Pleasant. And I'm dating a woman named Dira. I say dating because sometimes we dated and sometimes we didn't. But we had a relationship that would move back and forth between friends and dating completely seamlessly. We never felt a need to actually say we'd broken up. We just dated other people. We liked spending time together. There was a day in, day in January where we got together to study in my dorm room. And we got talking and studying and talking and talking about what we were studying. And before we knew it, it was 1 a.m. Rather than make her walk home in the dark, and rather than make myself walk home alone in the dark, I loaned her a t-shirt she spent the night. I still remember how her hair smelled as I held her. The next morning, we walked out together, and it was one of those perfect Michigan winter days where there's not a cloud in the sky. It feels, with the sun on your face, like it should be 80, and it's 20. We held hands the way that only Michigan kids know how to hold hands. <laughs> you take your glove off, you wrap your fingers together, and you stuff them in someone's pocket. <laughs> because you don't want to feel the wind on your bare skin. And I remember halfway to her dorm, I kissed her cheek. And I went to physics, and she went home. And all we heard that Wednesday was about this storm that was coming. And by Thursday morning... They were talking about Friday would be canceled because we weren't just getting snow. We were getting snow and ice and snow with ice and then freezing rain on top of the snow and the ice. So I called her. I called her because Thursday night she left to drive back to Utica, a two-hour drive, because she worked Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to pay for college. Her single mom could not afford her tuition or room and board, so if Deer wasn't there Friday morning, Deer didn't come back to campus. But I was worried, and I was right. And you know how when you start arguing with someone and you know you are right, you're not listening to what they say. You're just repeating yourself over and over and over, knowing eventually they will get it through their head and they will listen to you. And she was right. She had to be home. And we kept this up for almost half an hour before finally she had had enough of me. You are not my boyfriend. You don't tell me what to do. And the line went dead. The next morning I woke up and there was a banner over the desk in the dorm. Snow day. Class is canceled. I did what any good nerd does on a snow day. I went to the computer lab. <laughs> and when I walked out of the dorm, it was that same perfect Michigan morning. You wouldn't have known there had been a storm the night before, except that every surface was coated in diamonds. The trees were like crystal chandeliers and that sun dancing through the glass. I had to take these tiny steps because if I took a full stride, I would land on my ass. I get into the lab, I get logged onto the network, I start using what we call the internet, which, 1993, bear with me. <laughs> and about two hours later, the pop-up messages start to appear on the corner of the screen. It was a Unix system, if you know what that means, awesome. <laughs> Rob, come back to the room. And about every 20 minutes, my roommates would send me another. Rob, come back. Rob, we need you at the room. Rob, when are you coming back? Eventually, a message popped up. Rob, this is Rose. You need to come back to the room right now. We need to talk. Rose was a friend of ours. She lived off campus. So she was in my room, and she needed to talk to me. So I walked back. When I got to my dorm room, there was Rose. And there were my roommates. And they were sitting, watching the door, waiting for me to walk through. No one said anything until Rose finally broke that silence. Dira's mom called. 
She didn't make it home last night. So when I hear that song at the beginning of Frozen, I hear a song that reminds me of that exact moment when I realize my friends and I were mortal. I hear a song that reminds me that sometimes you don't get a chance to say I'm sorry. I hear a song that reminds me of a cheek I will never kiss again. I hear a song that makes me cry.